Welcome to Alfred's Essentials of Music Theory Software version 3. Hi, I'm Andrew Sermani, co-author of this series, and I'm here to walk you through some of the features of this software. Essentials of Music Theory is a complete curriculum in three volumes, comprised of lesson books, audio CDs, reproducible activity kits, games, and software for Windows and Mac. The software version is a full multimedia program with narration, exercises, and reviews, as well as ear training with a variety of acoustic instruments, all packaged into a complete learning environment. Let's get started. The biggest feature of EMT3 is the ability to further customize beyond that which was offered in version 2. Let's take a brief look at what directors can do in version 3. This is the main menu that is available to administrators. Some of these functions will not show up when the educator or student are logged in. You can get a quick tutorial of the course, read about the course, view the credits, and you can also register online. Going back to the main menu, let's go through some of the main system options. Administrators can modify the startup default options for the software, including running the program in a window mode and the music that is played when the program starts running. You can even add your own MP3 files to play at startup. In addition, you can change the review style from radio buttons to checkboxes, set the default language, and even adjust the login style. You can check for program updates to the software, which will be available from time to time. In this tab, you can view logs of different groups of students that you can set up to your preference, which I'll introduce shortly. This allows you to keep track of the activity of your students within the software. Finally, the administrators can change the database locations of the curriculum, help, users, and score databases as well as enter a new access code when you need to upgrade to more simultaneous users on the network version. In the maintenance section, you can change your password and you can add, delete, import, and export students and users. You can select a different profile type and group assigned to that student, add student information, and control the lesson plans that the student has access to. From this tab, you can set up the groups. There are various groups and score groups, or subgroups, that can be maintained in this section. The next tab is where the administrator can control what each profile has the ability to do. In this case, the student can only browse lessons, they can't add, modify, or delete lessons. However, you can see here that the educator can add, modify, and delete lessons, lesson plans, terms, syllabuses, and tests. Now let's take a look at some of the lessons featured in this program. Let's start with dynamic signs. Dynamic signs indicate the volume or how soft or loud the music should be played. Most musical terms are written in Italian since Italian composers were among the first to write such instructions in their manuscripts. The word piano in Italian means soft. The word forte means loud. Any term that is in blue is hyperlinked so that you can see a definition for that term. If you click on it, it takes you to the Terms section where you can see and hear more on that term. The lessons are animated and are created with Flash movies. We made the software interactive so there are elements to click and listen. You can also replay and skip lessons as necessary. Here's an example of a game that requires you to match up the Italian name with its symbol and the English definition. When the balloons are popped and you hear the applause, you know you've gotten everything correct. After completing a lesson, the Play Again button appears. When I click on the Play Again button, the examples are scrambled in a different order. So the purpose is the student can play this over and over again. In addition, if you need instructions on how to play, you can scroll your cursor over the question mark and instructions to play will appear. Now let's take a look at ear training. The first exercise starts off very simple. Here the student is listening to high sounds and low sounds. Another example in Unit 1 is the second note higher or lower than the first one. And whether I get it right or wrong, 
there is an accompanying sound. There's also a counter that keeps track of how many answers I got right. In all of these ear training exercises, we made sure to use real acoustic instruments. Piano, flute, clarinet, alto saxophone, trumpet, trombone, violin, and cello. High sounds and low sounds, brass, woodwinds, and strings. Here they're listening to all the notes in the treble clef, and then they hear all the notes in the bass clef. This exercise tests the student's ability to determine which clef the note is in when it is played back. Now we're going to go into the review section and start taking a test. For these default tests, the questions will stay the same, but the answers are always randomized. Now, as an educator, I can view scores from all the different lessons in my lesson plan, as well as seeing the various levels of performance data on the students. You can see the student's scores on these review tests. In addition, you can see a breakdown of the different units and lessons in each volume, which allows you to see the various exercises that the students completed. This score log shows how many attempts the student made, how long they spent on the exercise, the goals and number of examples completed, and their overall score. By looking at the user log, you can see how the students spent their time at each point in the various lessons. That way, if there's an area where a student is showing weakness, this helps you pinpoint their trouble spots for further review. This is the Terms and Symbols section, where you can click on any letter and see all the terms that start with that particular letter. In this case, if you click A and then Arpeggio, you get a written definition, a visual example of the term, you can hear the correct pronunciation, Arpeggio, and even an audio example. All you have to do is select any letter and you'll find terms that cover all three of the volumes. One of the greatest features of Essentials of Music Theory version 3 is the ability to customize so many things. First of all, you can create your own custom lessons. This is what's known as the lesson stage. And here you have all the elements that make up your custom lesson, such as movies, images, audio, text, and reviews. In order to design your lesson, all you need to do is drag the element you want onto the lesson stage. You can also click to import any element that you create. Let's try a few things. On the bottom, you can see the various specs on each part of the lesson that you just brought into the lesson stage. Another great feature is that you can customize terms. You can take a term that already exists, like arpeggio, and modify the term's written definition. You can import your own audio for pronunciation, you can import your own image file, and you can choose your own audio example. You can always modify what's there, or you can completely create your own term that you want to teach. You name the term and provide your own definition, pronunciation, visual example, an audio example. One great feature we kept in version 3 was the ability to create and modify your own tests. In this part, we give you the option of designing your tests with your own headers, instructions, fonts, colors, layouts, and sizes. When it's time to create your tests, you can choose from all the different questions available from the various lessons in the units. With many of these question types, you can also select how many exercises of each that you want to use to test your students. The next step allows you to review the full list of chosen questions and change the order of these questions to your liking. And then finally, click on a print preview and your test has been built from scratch using the selections you just made. We can see the test is well-rounded with a broad range of questions on different skills the students learn throughout the lessons. And then at the bottom, we have our set of answers that are automatically generated for the questions you chose. 
You can then print copies of this and use it to test the students in your class. Now let's look at a feature to design your own lesson plans. You can start by changing the volumes and units to terms and weeks depending on how you want to organize your curriculum. You can also choose how many of these terms and weeks you want to include based on the overall length of your class. So now when you go back to the main menu we can see the lesson plan you just created. When you view the lessons you'll find that it's set up into terms and weeks with the amount we specified for each of them. Going back to the plan maintenance screen, you can take the lessons that already exist and move them around to your liking. You can also add or delete lessons as necessary, essentially customizing your entire lesson plan. On a broader scale, you can design your syllabus based on the standards we have provided, such as the Essentials of Music Theory syllabus or the Australian Music Examination Board. You can add or copy a syllabus, and you can even control the grade limit for each topic and all the topics that are included. With all these great features, you can even choose whether you want to run the software in windowed mode or in full screen, and you can play the software with the audio on or off. The Essentials of Music Theory Software version 3 comes in various formats, such as the student version for lessons alone, the educator version for tracking and customization, the network version for educator and student use on a computer network, and for the very first time, a version that can be run over the internet by administrators, educators, and students. We hope you enjoy Essentials in Music Theory version 3.